Good morning. It's Monday. I made it just barely. Wild hair. I haven't had my tea. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and wait for some kids to catch up to me because I had to run. I had to really run <laughs> to get to the playground this morning. So I'm here. I'll turn a little light on the subject. There she is. <sighs> Big breath. Stepping aside. Okay, ego, step aside today. It's time for a little fun. It's time for the higher self to come into the building. <laughs> How are you feeling? I see two. I see two. I made it, you guys. It wasn't easy today, so I'm here. I have a lot of stuff going on in my world. I, I had a tribal fire last night. <laughs> Let's call it that. We built a little campfire last night here, and, and I have a whole house full of kids still. So, Sharon, Sherry. I see Sherry. So, um... So excuse me for being a little running late and being kind of a mess. I feel like I'm, I'm still doing makeup. <laughs> Are you guys used to me being like this yet? My inner child is alive and well. So <clears throat> excuse my, <laughs> excuse my uh, trying to recover myself this morning. It's not easy for us old people to stay up late with the kids, but I have figured this out. See, if I try to go to bed early, they stay up really late and they keep me awake. And I get grumpy because I don't get any sleep while they're, while they're doing their thing. I'm not getting any sleep. So here's the new plan. Hi, Wendy. Good morning. So nice to see you. So my new plan last night was they got good and worn out. I built a, they were already tired when they got back from swimming. I built the campfire. Hi, Terry Angel. I built the campfire. Uh, I don't want you to help me, Siri. Stop it. Um, I built a campfire and then I sat out there with them until they were tired enough to go to sleep. And then we put out the fire and we all came inside and we all went to bed. It was like a miracle. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> the light shone down on me. I'm like, I get it. I just have to join them. I can't try to go to bed before they do. I just have to try to get them good and tired. Just like they, when they were little kids, I used to do that. Get them good and tired, give them all chamomile tea and put them down to bed. So we all went to bed last night and we all slept. And even though I only slept from about one in the morning until seven or so, it's not my eight hours that I really need. At least it was uninterrupted. At least I just slept like a brick for six hours or so. So I'm a new woman today. <laughs> I'm going back to my lessons of being a young mother. Tire the, tire the little buggers out and put them all to bed with you. Sleep when they sleep instead of trying to sleep when they're wide awake. This house doesn't have great soundproofing. When they're awake, it's like, uh, every two minutes I'm like, bong, what was that? I don't, I haven't been a sound sleeper. For those of you who have had little children, little babies, you know, you, you stop sleeping. <laughs> when you have a newborn baby, you stop sleeping. <laughs> you just realize there's no more sleep for me ever. <laughs> and so... Even though I sleep, I kind of sleep with one eye open. I'm always on high alert. I always feel like I've got to be the one. I've spent a lot of time as a single mom. So, and even in my first marriage, I was, um, I don't want to go there too much, but I was the protector. I was the one, even from their father, I was the one that had to keep an eye on things all the time. So I learned not to sleep. So still, here I am. I sleep really light. I am always like, the one that hears every noise in the house. So, yes, Wendy, I need to get some earplugs. But if I get earplugs, then if somebody gets sick in the middle of the night, <laughs> I still have a 13-year-old in the house all the time. And if she should need me in the middle of the night, if she stays up all night a lot of times, and she does crazy things like jumping up underneath um, last week, I had just stepped out for a little bit. I'm on a phone call, and all of a sudden she's like, she starts calling me. She never calls me. I'm like, why is this child calling me? I'm only like 300 feet down the road. <clears throat> I was on another call. Oh, that butterfly just hanging around the front yard right now. So pretty. Shiny object syndrome. I was on another call, so I canceled out on her, and I thought, well, I'll get right back to her. A few minutes later, she called me right back, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? So I turn, and I head back this way. And then she call, I pick up the phone and she's like, Mom, my head is bleeding. I'm like, oh my gosh, what has she done? <laughs> what has she done? I mean, like I just left her. Just I just saw her. She was just sitting in her bed. I come back and she had jumped up underneath um, a light fixture. And it has like a pineapple shape. And it hit her right there in the head. And she had. I got back and she had blood all over it. I'm like, oh gosh. 
it turned out to be a very little thing. It wasn't a big deal, but of course, being 13, that butterfly is literally just dancing in my front yard. He's not leaving. Hi, Steve. <laughs> that's what I say. Um, so that's why I don't sleep because she doesn't sleep at night most often. And if I'm asleep solidly and she hurts herself, then it, I don't know what's going on. See, see, I'm just that protective. It's, it's a part of me. I will still hear. I hear my phone alarm. Do you? Sometimes I give in to it. I'm so tired that I put my earbuds in and I put, yesterday I did that. They all went out swimming and I put in my earbuds and I put some meditation in and I slept for probably, I think only a half an hour, but I was so gone that when I did start to wake up again, I was like, ah, is it time to wake up for my show? I thought it was the next day. <laughs> I was looking out the window to see if it was laid out. So I do. Sometimes I give in to it, Wendy. Hi, Geraldine. I think I caught everybody. Geraldine is Terry. Oh, Julie. Hi, Julie. I missed you sneaking in because I was blabbing already this morning. Yes, they are the best days with kids around. And you know what's really fun is when they come back, when they're grown ups and they don't really need you that much. They just want you. They just want to be around you and spend time with you. And I can forget that. I can get busy doing all these other things. And, and I... And they're so busy with each other and suddenly I realized, wait, last night when I was going to bed, I was so thankful that I had stopped long enough that I took that nap so that I was more rested when they got back so that I could sit out there and around our little tribal campfire. I felt like I had gathered the tribe together and we had time to just talk and kind of connect with each other and it was good to do that. So it's a good reminder. Thank you for that. It is a good reminder that they're mostly grown up and, and yet I really enjoy them. <clears throat> they are really interesting people. Let's see, what else is going on with you guys? I, I, um, can you let me see a photo with the new musical box you gifted Abby, please? Sure I can, Wendy. The, the thing that drew me yesterday, I went to that same shop and I literally was, I was done. I had found, I found an apron. I found a red apron with kitty cats on it that was the exact apron, the exact same apron that my grandmother used to wear in the kitchen. So I grabbed that, and I got a book by Joseph Campbell. It was in a whole bunch of religious books, and there's that Joseph Campbell. And I'm like, yes, I love Joseph, Joseph Campbell. So I grabbed that book, and I thought, well, that's probably all I'm going to do today. I got up to the register. <laughs> i got to show these off. I got up to the register, and we've been talking dragons so much, and something was, I'm so energy sensitive, and that shop was really wearing me out. It was drawing the life force out of me. I got upstairs, and I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know what it is in this place, but I can barely breathe. So I had some struggles, and I was pretty tired, and I was like, I got to go. So I get back down to the register with my two little treasures, and the energy sensitive goes two ways. It can make us really tired. It also puts us into this, um, like, I, I felt joy all of a sudden. I'm like, well, well wait, <laughs> something's right here. What is it? I've been looking through the whole place because I'm such an energy hound. I'm like, what is it that's drawing me? And and I look at it and I'm like, oh, what's that? <laughs> Check this out. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And look, at he's got a little crystal right here. And I was like so drawn to it. And she was willing to really sell it cheap to me. And then she goes, well, there's two in there. <laughs> and she goes, I'll give you a really good deal on both of them. And so we snuck in the little baby one, too. <laughs> Isn't he pretty? So I put it on my desk, right? It's my little focus point when I'm meditating to remind me that our dragons are always around us. So that's my treasure. Yes, I got the dragons at that same place where the music box was. The music box is not really anything fancy. It's like a little piano with... Um, I'll have to get it. I'll send a picture to you. It's in another room with... Um, it's a jewelry box, basically. There's just something energetically that drew me to it. Fabulita, thank you for popping in. Always happy to see all your smiling faces in the morning. Uh, yeah, the, the, it was a it was an Abby gift from Steve. That's the important thing is to remember that music box was definitely. She, I walked in, she loves miniatures, and I walked in and I don't even know why I bought it. I walked in, and she's like, "Wow, I love that thing." <laughs> she's so excited about it. She shows it to everybody. So that's that's the important so that music box because it was like Steve was like I gotta give something to my baby and so I feel good about that let's see 
What else we got going? Oliver, yes. Does he? He's. I think he's like Oliver to me. He's got all these iridescent colors, so I I know that's why I was drawn to him. The blue green, but and I know you said yours was the same. He's like a blue green iridescent. As soon as I saw it, I was like, hi, Oliver. <laughs> somebody made somebody made a statue out of you. Do you know that this? I, anybody that really loves dragons, they can they can get kind of expensive. These little dragons. I got a good deal. Windstone, if you've ever heard of it, Windstone, I, was, I looked it up and there's tons of them. So I now have a new obsession. <laughs> I will probably have dragons everywhere. Anybody, I'm going to tell all my kids, whoever, when you see these dragons, I'm collecting these dragons. Um, I can get really obsessive. It's better than the flying pigs. My kids got so tired of flying pigs. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, they were. They are very expensive. They... Wendy, I love how you research things. They aren't, like, this one I think would sell for about $160 new. Um, I think the little one was about 80 and she sold me the two of them for 80 so I felt like I got a good deal. But she had a much higher prices on them. They've been, the store's been closed for a while, so they had, she was just, like, making deals yesterday. Melanie, thank you for popping in. All right. Music is Cats. Yeah, it's that song from Cats. I can't remember the name. <laughs> I can get the tune, but I'm not singing. I'm, I'm saying you're not. You can't make me. You can't bake me. Memories. Something like that. It is a song from Cats. Um. Yes, I have a similar one hatching from the egg, but this. Um, but I got them both at the same time. We're having fun with our antiques today, aren't we? In our collectibles. <laughs> Sorry, this really wasn't the direction, but I love how it just kind of. You guys come in, and it's like let's just talk. It's just relax. I kind of need that this morning. I kind of need to just be with my, this tribe sometimes. You know, we get, do you know how that feels when you're out and about? And like, I went to another family event, a graduation party, small one yesterday for um, one of Jim's nieces. And, um, and I had these kids, these busy kids around me all day. And I had to go through town and I had to do a little, you know, a few runs, errands and things. And by the time I got done with all that, I was absolutely drained and wishing for um, some good time with this tribe, these people who have more, you people, who have more, you're more awake, you're more uh, um, aware of what's going on right now because we can really get drawn into all of the worries and concerns. My stomach is growing right out loud. I apologize if you guys can hear that. <laughs> Before I started, I was like, wow, if you do that on camera, it's going to be kind of hilarious. It's doing it again. I'm really hungry this morning for some reason, and I don't eat this early, so it's just going to have to settle down. Anyway, um, I, I'm flipping from ego to higher self very quickly today, and I need to settle down. So it's good for me to be with you guys. It's like our little children need to gather and, and just get easy and just be in that space of, wow, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed by all of the events on the planet and my edges are frayed and I'd love to sit here and spend time with all of you and smooth those edges out and just be in stillness together. So, so I'm working my way through that. Can you tell? My, my energy will suddenly shift. It's trying to get back in into a calmer space. I'm going to try really. I'm going to try to say this to my page while I am thinking about it because I completely forgot. Oh, there I am. I love it when it pops right up in front of me. Well, probably because Terry, other people have been sharing. You guys are so good to me. Oh, thank you. Okay, I think I saved that through the right place. <laughs> Sometimes I save it. To what I think is my page and I have no idea where it goes okay what do you got yeah Jirlan that is so interesting that you're that you're dragon because neither one of us had had any knowledge of the other person's dragon and I'm sitting there in that dragon class and I saw this beautiful dragon ah, he's so pretty and those are the colors he's so iridescent and he is so pretty and and his name was exactly the same as your dragon's name. So I get we've got this Jared Dragon. Oliver likes us both. <laughs> he's he's sharing himself with us. 
Let's see, a white feather appeared out of nowhere in the garage yesterday. Wow, that's cool. Oh, I do have my glasses. Jeez, I'm a mess today. I got all dirty there. A white feather appeared out of nowhere in the garage yesterday after finishing cleaning the garage and rental property. A wonderful sign. Ah, thank all the prayers. I think all the prayers helped me so much for showing that job well done from above. Very good. Excellent, Julie. I'm so glad that you got some peace from that. Um, session yesterday that you were able to finish that without feeling so stressed. That's what we're here for. That's why we gather, so we can help each other through it, right? Julie, oh, so you posted the photo. I apologize to everyone. My world is insane right now, so I haven't been able to get on Facebook and follow things as closely as I usually do. Sometimes you got to put it all away and be with the real, with the physical people who are around you, so it's been one of those weekends for me. Is it the song that is sung at the duo? See, I sang for you. <laughs> it's that one. Does that help you? Um, I have a robin making a nest in a gazebo. I keep seeing robins. When you said that, I suddenly went, da ding, 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 ding. When, okay, I'm going to see if I can follow this line. I love when you guys trigger me to something that I'm like, oh. The other day, <clears throat> when Terry was doing that um, seventh generation clearing, I saw, I was, I was way deeply into it, and I saw a couple people, but I also saw so clearly, right in front of me, there was a curving sidewalk, and a robin, as beautiful as anything, whether it was clear as it was out here in my front yard, flew down, and it picked up a picture of something, and it flew away. And you just reminded me of that robin. I have a robin making a nest in the gazebo again. And as you said, the robin in the nest in the gazebo, I thought Batman and Robin. That was the first thought that came to me. I'm going to have to work on the robin thing today. I'm glad that you reminded me of the robin. I think there's something there for me. Robin's, robin is Batman's sidekick. But what was in the picture? Hmm. <laughs> That's it. Do you love the way spirit works? And we get these visions, and then we can sit around. With, they're like little puzzles. You're like, hmm. And it's like a fun little game to try to sort out. And I think sometimes that there's multiple, um, there's multiple messages maybe to everything. Eric Elliott, thank you for joining us. Batman and Robin, you're right, Wendy. But what was that robin doing? Why did it swoop in and grab that picture? And what was in the picture? I didn't pay close enough attention. I, I feel like the picture was a picture of two people. Sorry, I'm getting lost. Batman was in the picture, maybe. I don't know. I think that there's some significance there for me, but I'm not really sure, so I'm going to have to spend some quiet time. I don't need to do that with you guys. I can spend, but I just feel like it's there's something to that for all of us, that as our third eyes are, <laughs> sounds funny to say it that way, as the third eye is waking up and clearing out, that sometimes we th see things, sometimes they have real solid purpose, and sometimes it's just like, oh, hello, you're getting the message. <laughs> and so, And I think that with that one, I think that Steve was just being silly. Can you see this? Look at this, because <laughs> he is very, he still, we still hold that, you know, like, yes, we go into higher self land, we, we, he's very, very wise, he's passed, and he's very, very wise, he's smarter than I am right now, for sure, but he still does silly things, I have a good friend that he has come to often, and I remember sometimes she was sitting there, and suddenly she'd feel him close, and all of a sudden she'd like her coffee. She'd be sitting there with a drink of coffee or something, and it would tip up, and it would spill on her. And she's like, she gets so mad. <laughs> she'd blame it on him. So I don't know if he actually did that, but she swore he was playing with her. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I do have the windows open right now, so you might hear the birds. They're kind of, they're quiet right now. Where'd they go? <laughs> They'll be back. Julie, I do. Being here in the mountains, we got a lot of great birds. Yes, memories, Wendy. That's one of those memories. Memories. That's the name of the song. All alone in the midnight. 
can't remember all the words. You can look it up. All right, so we're going to go into this just a little bit because um, my subject, as I was showering today, that's where I always seem to get the messages, was, yes, I'm getting it. Big energy. Big energy. I like that. Was this game of tug of war that we're all playing. And a reminder that, have you ever played tug of war? You have these days when, or these games, like you get, hopefully you get pretty equal sides. And the one side will pull really hard and they're, they're pulling so hard that they're kind of pulling the other side into the water or whatever's in the middle. And then all of a sudden they seem to rally and they pull and then you get pulled back over towards any other direction. And it can go on like that for a while. It's like pull and then, oh, you're getting, and then pull until the, both sides get so tired that eventually one side gives up and down they all go. We are all in such a game of tug of war, tug of war right now, aren't we? It's like on a spiritual level, we have all of these physical things with this virus, with this, all of the protesting and the riots and all of the stuff. We have so much pummeling us right now, and it's like we're in this tug of war to try to hold ourselves in that higher vibration, to remember that there is more under the surface and that we're going through this huge growth. And so the reminder to me has been make sure that you're that you're not allowing yourself. We're all going to kind of fall back sometimes. At times we're going to feel weak. We're going to start to fall down. And we're going to have to help each other. And we have to lift each other up. But remember the progress that we've made. Don't let yourself believe that you have lost everything. That in those moments when... I remember after he died, I wrote a piece on it. And I'll have to look up which piece it is. I don't even know if it made it to the book. But I was really, really down... And I felt as if all of the progress that I had made, um, I had really got drawn in close to um, my, the creator energy, to um, really opening up to the truth of who I am. And then I would have these days when I was so physical, when I was just exhausted, when I didn't feel well, when I missed Steve, when I fell deeply into grief. And in those moments when I felt into that lower vibration, I remember feeling like, I lost it all. Like all of that work that I had been doing, I was flying. I was feeling so good. I felt my wings. I felt so good. And now I'm right back into the, the pits again. And I've lost it all. All of the progress that I made, I lost it. I'm back in the mud puddle. And i got to start all over. And there was times when I felt like I just wanted to quit. The reminder is, is that we never lose it all. What we gain, we always keep. But, but at times when our vibrations fall into the dumps, it's hard for us to feel that progress that we've made, but it's still there. And so it's a, this constant tug of war on us of feeling like, oh, we've lost everything. Where did we go? Where did we go? I found myself and now I'm gone again. Where did I go? Um, I just, I feel like it's important to remember that we, we aren't, no matter what, <laughs> that we aren't losing that we still have all of that, that we just, sometimes it gets buried a little bit, that's all. Sometimes it's just, we have to go through these ups and downs on the roller coaster ride. And when we're coming back down, it can feel like, well, man, I'm never going to go back up again. And the ride always comes back up. And I found for me is the deeper I went down into that pit, sometimes that roller coaster goes way down under, <laughs> way down in the ground, it seems like. And the deeper I went down into that pit, uh, the higher up I would go. Like, it's just such a contrast. I had to go through the deep, deep depths in, in order to be able to experience that high, that incredible high that comes after it. And so I feel like that's what Spirit is trying to give us today. For whoever is here, there's a message in that. So that don't, don't get lost in that. Don't feel as if, you know, it, you're going to go down there. You're going to go down those lows. But realize, remember, keep telling yourself that it's okay, I can go through this because I know that when I'm down in the dumps, way down in what I used to call my mud puddles, when I'm down in there, it's just a time of rest. It's a time of integration. It's a time of growth. It's a time of releasing whatever you're going through. And when you come back up out of that, you're going to fly. So remember that this is all just a tug of war. And in the end, you're going to win. You're going to win. You just have to keep holding on. <clears throat> don't, don't, you know, don't let go. Keep holding on. That's the reminder that they're trying to give you today. As we've made so much progress over the past couple of months, we've really come a long ways. 
don't forget the progress that you've made when you're down in those low points, when the world is pummeling you and you feel like, oh, I'm so ready to give up. Like, I am so tired. My soul just wants to let go and fly free. Remember that you came here for this, that you are doing a beautiful job, that you are growing in leaps and bounds, that you are incredible, and that you will come back up out. And yet when you come back up on the other side, <clears throat> you are going to be something to behold. <clears throat> That's the truth of it. Never give up. You're right, Julie. Just never give up. Keep holding on. And when you need it, don't forget to reach for that rope. Don't forget to um, put your hand out and say, hey, I need some help right now. You have a huge team around you at all times. They're always there to help. And when and that's in physical form and that's in spiritual form. <laughs> I wrote a piece in the book called The Crew, and I meant that. It was like, don't forget that you're not all alone in this. That, yes, you have you have your angels and your guides. They're always around you. And they've also created for you a team, a crew, um, a tribe, and that you can go to that tribe and that you can ask for um, a little bit of a boost anytime you need to. We're always here. I'm here. I know that many of you are here for each other. My tea is getting cold. I need that caffeine. Sorry. <laughs> so, so remember that, okay? I feel like it's important to remind people of that. Never give up. Never give up. Keep holding on to that rope. Just keep on fighting that good fight. We're, we're, we are literally light against darkness, good against evil. It's like really, really domineering the whole atmosphere of the planet right now. We are winning. Love is always going to win. It's going to win this battle. But don't think that it's going to be an easy battle to win. We, As much as we would all love, I was thinking about that yesterday, as much as we would all love to see this thing just suddenly everybody wake up to who they are, everybody know the truth, and all of the hatred go away, all the scarcity go away. Wouldn't you love that? It's a gradual process. This is... A rite of passage that humanity has to go through in order to get to a higher state of being and other places other planets have done it this is we're not the first one there are, there is life out there and they have gone through this and they have made it out the other side and they are right there back in us now watching us as we're going through this struggle this is the biggest struggle that we've ever been through we are literally at war right now with the darkness and so we can't help but be affected by it. We can't help but have these darker energies um, pull us down at times. And yet, remember that you have a, a beautiful team, a beautiful tribe, angels, all of this. They're so present right now. They know that the higher realms, they know that we, we need this support right now. And so they're so close. So remember to open to that when you're feeling it's difficult. Even when we get really tired. Last night I was just exhausted and I'm trying so hard to open my heart. I'm like so, and my heart will not, doesn't cooperate as well when I'm really, really exhausted. So let's just be there for each other. You know, like, hey, I know you're really tired right now. Just go to sleep for a while. Just rest. It's okay. It's okay to rest. It's okay to take good care of yourself. We need you to take care of yourself. So be good to you. Be good to you and reach out for help when you need it. That's my, my thing this morning. <laughs> I don't need to keep harping on it. That's, that's where the whole message was going for me today. And it feels really powerful. And I feel like all of a sudden, the energy is filling the room. <laughs> Hello. So I'm going to center us a little bit. I want us to just be in that space of love today, of support, to realize, to feel what it's like to have that team right at your back. And as I say that, I feel a comfort at my back. Can you feel that? Can you be still for just a minute and use your imagination and know that the imagination is such a powerful tool and that is what opens us to our intuition oftentimes. If you feel like you're not gifted, everybody else has so much more than you, could you please remember that you are the one that gets to open the door to those gifts, that you are the one that holds it back out of fear, out of disbelief out of thinking I can't do that and also remember that oh my gosh just being here just being a light worker my gosh you are so appreciated and so loved and so powerful that's a beautiful gift to be a light worker 
to come here and just hold the light for other people. Just hold the light. <laughs> There's nothing just about that. <laughs> it's an, it's an, such an important job. It's such a beautiful gift to be able to shine your light brightly in a world that's so filled with darkness. So... There's a comfort at my back, and I'd like you to use your imagination right now as you're sitting there, standing there, laying there, wherever you are. Take a big breath and imagine right now. Imagine an army of angels at your back. Can you feel that? There's warmth. There's just a sense of... Let me see what it feels like. I can't even describe it. It's like... This comfort, it's just comfort. It's like no matter where you go, what you do, we got your back. Have you ever had a friend like that? Have you ever had um, a mate, um, a sibling, anyone that just, no matter what, no matter what happened in the world, you could call on them and they, I got your back, I got you, I got you. Many of us didn't have parents like that. We do now. <laughs> They always got your back, and they do right now. So I hope you can feel that. I hope you can sense that. They are, we are inviting all of these angels, the ascended masters, archangels. I'm not even going to say your name names. I do love to say Michael in particular because I love his strength. Have you ever played that game where you just sit down and quiet, and if you're really energy sensitive, and even if you're not, just start playing that game. Sit down in a quiet space, and then... Call on your guides one at a time, even if you don't know their names. Can you come in and let me feel your energy? I remember the day when I said, I want to feel what Archangel Michael feels like. And so I called him in all by himself. <laughs> Hello. <sighs> feel that right now. Archangel Michael is here. Can you feel the strength? Can you feel that safety? That's what he feels like to me, this overwhelming sense of wrapping himself around us and saying, you are so safe, you are so protected. Always, I am always here for you. I am always protecting you. Even when you're unaware, I'm always here. Just reach out for me, just say yes. I want that. I want that protection. Can you feel that? Breathe that in right now. Breathe that sense of love that sense of peace, that sense of, you know what it feels like when, if you see a little girl whose daddy is holding her in, in his arms, when they're, they're just like, say they're sitting at the park and <clears throat> the little girl's gotten kind of sleepy. Daddy's sitting there in the chair and she just turns to him and she says, she doesn't say anything, she just looks at him and goes, oh, that's the safest place on the planet. I'm going to go curl up in daddy's arms and fall asleep. I've had relationships like that. I didn't necessarily get that with my dad, but I've had that with other relationships where I felt like I could just curl up with this person. I remember Steve. <laughs> Steve was my first like that, but whenever we would, <laughs> I used to frustrate him when we would sit down on the couch to watch a movie. Um, I would, I was so tired back then. <clears throat> I had so many kids and I just didn't get any rest. So I was so tired and I needed to feel safe more than anything in the world. My PTSD was, was through the roof, and I needed that safety, and so we would curl up to watch a movie, and I was out like a light, and I was like, I'm safe here, I can sleep, back to the beginning of our conversation, Wendy, when he was with me, I could sleep soundly, and it took me a long time to learn how to sleep again after he passed, <clears throat> but even after he passed, he would curl up behind me, he would, I would feel him, I'd lay down, I'd say, will you please Will you please curl up with me? And I would feel him just wrap himself around me. So spirit is so, if you don't have that in physical form, if you can't imagine it in physical form, remember that spirit will do that for you when you ask. They'll curl up, and I need to do that more often. <clears throat> now that I'm talking about it, excuse me. <clears throat> I get choked up. <clears throat> I'm choked up. Um... Remember to ask and allow yourself to feel wrapped up in love, okay? All right, so we're going to be, <clears throat> for those of you who have stuck with me, if I can get myself cleared out again, um, there's some energy there that needs to be cleared. That's why I always get all 
choked up, so I know I do, and I hope that you do too, if you, if you, or that you're ready for it, if you're ready to clear that out, because if you are, we're going to go ahead and call in Archangel Raphael, we're going to call in our teams, we're going to call in the healing energies, and we're going to ask Source Energy to come in, and to pour that beautiful golden crystalline light, I can't tell you how beautiful it is. I feel like I'm, I've just stepped into the waterfall. So let's envision that right now. Let's be these little children. My kids went to a, to a little mountain stream lake thing last night, and it was beautiful. And so I want to be like them, all of us. Can you, can you see your little ones in their little bathing suits, their inner tubes, their little floaty devices, whatever you'd like to have? Can you envision yourself standing at a waterfall? It's beautiful. The angels are playing in the water. I can see them. It's a beautiful place to, to spend time. Our little children love it there. So they're giggling and they're happy. And remember to breathe in this healing energy. And as they step into the water, it feels cool on their feet but comfortable. And there's a waterfall. And they want to go play in that waterfall. So whenever you're ready, take that little child and step under the water that's pouring down. And it's a different kind of water than you've ever experienced. This water is healing. It's golden. It's, it's soft and comforting. And it wraps itself around you. And just sit in that. Stay right there, wrapped up in that beautiful waterfall of comfort. And that water is pouring down through your energy centers right now. I feel like I want to cry again. I feel it on the inside and the outside as if they're flushing through each one of your chakras right now. Through the crown, down through the third eye. They want to keep you cleared out. Keep all of that energy clear for you. <clears throat> it's important to sit through that every day. Maybe more than once a day. If you start to feel afraid at any point, they are promising you, they're, they're reminding you that they're always here to clear your energy centers, to help you to rid yourself of those blocks. So just remember to ask. So the children are giggling and they're laughing and they're enjoying that beautiful sense of safety and protection. And they're thanking you for allowing them to have this free time. And as they're doing that, Remember to breathe deeply from the base of your spine. Pull it all the way up. You can feel it coming right up and through the back of your throat. So just allow that. Ah, nice. Nice energy lifted right there off the heart space. For those of you that are carrying something heavy today, some pain. I'm going to ask Archangel Michael. I feel as if maybe there's some earthbound activity going on around somebody here in the group. So let's ask to have that, that energy if there's any cords or attachments that are not there for your highest of good. <coughs> any earthbound energy, any earthbound spirits that need to be crossed over. We ask Archangel Michael to come in and sever and release any of those cords or attachments at this time. If you're feeling nauseated and sick in the belly area, let's let's sever and release any of that energy today. They don't need to hang around with us like that. You never lose the love of your loved ones. You're not going to lose that love. But when we hold on to them in that way, when they cling to us, and there's cords and attachments to the solar plexus, to anywhere in the belly area, anywhere really, we will feel more tired. We'll feel drained. We'll feel sick. We'll feel nauseated. We don't feel so good. It's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for us. They need to cross over. They need to go into healing. And so and even oftentimes with Steve, he had crossed over, and yet he was still had a, an unhealthy attachment for me. Toughest thing I ever did was allow that attachment to be severed and released, but it didn't take his love away from me. You never lose the love. You see where it's come to. He was able to go into healing. I was able to heal. 
And then we were able to come back together in a healthy way that created this beautiful bond between us. So let go of that. Don't hold on. If you're listening now or you listen in a month or a year from now, if you sense that you have that unhealthy attachment, you can always ask to have it severed and released. And we would ask Archangel Michael to come in. And any earthbound spirits, any anyone that is still clinging, that needs to have that cord severed and released, we ask you to take them off into healing. Take them into that white light. Allow them to finally be free of all of that earth, earthly worry and concern and pain. Let them be free to heal. I felt the release. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's okay. It's okay to let go. It's okay. Take a big breath. Take in a big breath. Allow that healing to fill you right now. It's okay. You may not even know that you've got any attachments. Oftentimes we don't. We're this bright light and they just, they like, ah, I see a light. And they go and they hold on. They just want help. They're not here to hurt us. They just want help, and they're receiving that help right now. So rest and allow that healing for yourself, too. The angels are coming in. Beautiful. I feel a lot of energy changing and shifting around the belly area, and I'm loving that. And then the heart space, that that need to cry is lifting away. So I feel like somebody in the group, has been affected by an earthbound for a little bit. And every time we gather, all of a sudden, that need to cry pops up. That's what happens to us. We feel their emotions. How beautiful when they're allowed to go into healing and they don't have to suffer anymore. Then they can finally feel free. They can finally fly. Oh, we get to fly when we cross over. And it's a beautiful thing. You bet. Big release. <sighs> a good one. Off the, off the throat. It came all the way up into the throat. Thank you for that release. I'm seeing what I feel. Those little children, I can see them having fun. Can you, can you, as you're sitting here relaxing and healing, can you envision your little children playing in that water? They're splashing each other. <laughs> Cause them, there's a couple little troublemakers in there having fun. <laughs> and it's okay. And let them just have fun. Just have fun. It's okay. Do you see any elementals in there? Can you dive down into the water and find yourself a treasure? How about that? Let's go find some treasures. Here in the mountains, we literally have beautiful crystals that just come on down. They just, they come out of the dirt. There's, it's ancient, ancient energy here, truly. And... I got a whole counter full of them right there. They're they're semi precious and they're ah gosh. I, we find rose quartz and amethysts everywhere. All kinds of beautiful crystals. So I'm gonna dive down in. What what color is the crystal? Soda light blue for me today. I, I see that blue under the water and I love it. What do you see? Give to your child. Let your child go find you a gift. You ever see little children when they find something pretty, they come to you and they give it to you. Like just so much innocence. So they're gonna dive down in and they're gonna find you that gift and they're gonna bring it back up and they're gonna bring it back to you in just a few minutes. And as they are doing their diving, they're taking a big breath. So join them in that. Take a big breath. Breathe in that beautiful healing stream, all of that that golden white light that's in the water that they're swimming and breathe it into your lungs right now, into your heart. And it travels through every cell of your body. If you have disease or illness, Wendy, this is for you too. If you're having any issues physically, you guys know who you are, or emotionally. Feel a lift. Excellent. <sighs> Beautiful. You find a seashell, Julie. Beautiful. How do 
do you say abalone shells? I've been seeing that that everywhere I go. I found a little turtle at a junk shop that's got abalone shell in them too. I've been really drawn to that and that kind of jewelry is so beautiful. I'm feeling the energy as we're sitting here. I feel this energy moving throughout each one of us. This healing, loving presence. I am here. I am. Say that for me, please. You have spent your whole life being a certain person. You've got a name. You've got a social security number. You've got all these things. And yet, the truth is, you are. I am. I am. I am. I have been here since the beginning of time and before. <coughs> I'm so sorry. We've got a lot of clearing going on. It's incredible. I love sitting here with you guys doing this. I am that I am that I am that I am. How powerful do you feel when you say that I am? <laughs> I don't need to be anyone for a little while today. I'm just, I am. I am you. You are me. We are all so connected. And we all come from the same source. I am. Breathe that in. Breathe in your I am presence. That's beautiful. I feel that in the solar plexus. Excellent. Excellent. One more big breath. Let's integrate this energy and then we're going to draw our children back in, okay? Take a big breath. Pull it all the way from your toes. Pull that energy up from the earth. I love these angels. I love this entourage of energy that joins us in the morning. I hope you can feel it. It's like being just wrapped up like babies today. And so I would like you to now visualize each one of your little children. They're bringing you those gifts they found. They have big smiles on their faces. They're so proud of the gift they're bringing to you. So draw them back in. Bring them back to you. Each one is going to climb back into that heart space. And they are going to have a good rest. They've been working so hard. And they feel so at peace for the time that you've given them to just stand in that beautiful waterfall. To play with the angels. To be at peace. There's a calming. There's a sense of release. A sense of, I can be still now. Thank you. And can you feel them climbing back in there for a rest? I do. And now we would ask Archangel Michael to wrap us, wrap us up in a beautiful blanket of protection today. To feel just safe. To feel the angels all around us. How beautiful if we can just experience, remember that. Just say, I want to feel what you feel like today. I want to feel my angels. I need to know my angels are all around me protecting me. Allow them to give you that gift today. And they say, yes, we're here. Yes, we're here. We're always here to, to wrap you up and to love on you. Just pay attention. Just notice us, please. We're right here. We never leave. All wrapped up like a bunch of newborn babies right now. Incredibly powerful, loving energy. One more breath. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me in that today. I have no idea the time. 1020. We've got a few more minutes, so I'm going to check in. I would like to hear what your children brought to you today. Did you see some gifts? Did you see them bringing you goodies? Do you think, Wendy, do you think Batman was in that picture? Maybe Robin flew that. That would be hilarious if... He sent me a picture of Batman, and then Robin, the bird, flew in and grabbed that picture and flew away with it. <laughs> that would be just like him. I like that idea. Wendy, I had an oyster shell, but just real peace today. Excellent. That's what it's all about, Kamal. You're, thank you for joining us from Pakistan. So please, 
Um, if you got if you got some beautiful gifts from your children today, feel free to share them. I hope you'll get out your crayons and your coloring books or your your drawing pad and maybe draw the gifts that they brought to you. You think it was me and Steve? It, I kind of had that vision too, Wendy, that it was Robin coming in and taking that picture of Steve and I. And I'm trying to sort through that. It makes me a little emotional that maybe it's time for me to let go a little bit of that physical relationship that he and I had because I'm moving into this new life with this new person. And so it's time for me to allow him to come to me as source, as this superhero that he is and to step away from that physical pain of loss and all that comes with that so maybe that's what he was trying to show me thank you for that wendy on your wedding day he was batman is batman and you're his robin <laughs> that's really beautiful because i was always he used to call me his catwoman i never that name never fit me i am very cat-like so i guess that's where he got it from I like to curl up. I like to, I'm a heat seeker. <laughs> I love to lay in the sun. I love to curl up. I love to, on a cold night, I always snuggled in close. I still do that. I'm always looking at my feet and hands are always cold and I'm always looking for heat. So, so Catwoman kind of fit in that way, but maybe Jim is Robin. Did you maybe think about that? That Jim is his sidekick. He, he brought Jim in to take over, to take over as the protector, the caretaker here. Marika, you're not so late. You can catch up. <laughs> you just have to go back to the beginning again. We just finished our meditation. It was a beautiful time of healing and um, clearing. So, and just peaceful presence today. So, you can go back. Um, I'll save this and you can go back and catch the whole thing. Uh, Julie Kiss, everyone have a great day. Hope to see you all at 3.33 today. Yes, 3.33, you guys. Let's give it one more plug. 3.33 is a brand new show with Cheryl Ann and I. And... We will literally be giving voices to those people who have mystical, beautiful, magical experiences and haven't had a platform to show it. And so even people that maybe don't feel comfortable speaking publicly, <laughs> the idea here is to give you the chance to come on and speak publicly of your miraculous experiences and we will help you through it. <laughs> we are not going to let you fall down. We're going to help you fill that hour. We're going to help you. We're going to bring you... Um, Geraldine and I can be very motherly, <laughs> comforting souls, and we will help you get through uh, being on camera and speaking. So if any of you are interested in that, please, you know, if you are, if you have mystical experiences and you want, you feel like you're getting the push to share them on a public platform, um, private message one of us, either Geraldine or I, and we will see if we can't fit you in the schedule fairly soon. We've got Wendy and her husband will be coming up. Um, uh, geraldine has got someone, I'm not sure, Barbara, I think that's the name, who has incredible experiences. Today will be Erin Robertson, who is an animal communicator. Um, she has been since she was born. She's a very, very interesting soul. She comes to us from New Zealand, and so she's got this amazing accent, and <laughs> and it'll be really different and incredible. I feel like she needs to be for someone who was born wide open with animal communication was told that she needed to train dogs in the way that everyone else trains dogs, that kind of thing. And her saying, I can't do that because I, I hear them. I, each one is different. Each one needs to be trained differently. Each one, each animal has a voice. So she has a very interesting story to share today. So if you're into animal communication at all, please join us today. I think you'll find her story very interesting. 3.33 today, Eastern Standard Time. Let's see. Maybe, Wendy. <laughs> we'll see. We'll keep evaluating that vision. Um, love you, Marika. Thank you for joining us. Silent Mystics. Now showing on Enlightened World Network at 3.33 p.m. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Or, Wendy. Eastern Standard Time, 8.33 p.m. United Kingdom. Okay. And if you're in New Zealand... Like she is, like um, Aaron is, it will be 7.30 tomorrow morning. <laughs> She's literally meeting us at our time, 3.33 in the afternoon, and it will be 7.33 a.m. on Tuesday for her. Christine, thank you for joining us. 
<laughs> We're just getting ready to jump on off of here, but I want to give I want to wish you all a beautiful, beautiful day. Remember that your angels are all around you. Remember that we're all going through this roller coaster ride, this tug of war of ups and downs, and you never lose it all. You just you take three steps forward, one step back, five steps forward, one step back. You'll continue to move forward always, always. It's just it's just that struggle. You just keep holding on. It's gonna be okay. You know that we're here. We're all a crew. We're helping you with the tug of war. We're here to help you. Just ask anytime. Yes, yeah, she will be up early for, for the show. I hope she wakes up. <laughs> I hope she wakes up on time. Thank you so much. Thank you, MB. Thank you for joining me today. I love your energy. I love to share this time with you. I will be here to, this afternoon at 3.33 and back tomorrow morning at 9.30. And I can't wait to see you. Take good care of yourselves. I love you so much. Bye now.